allow me to reiterate, I am not a professional in the area of depression and suicide. I would be at best considered a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who could save anybody. It's kind of like a good home remedy. If the gospel works for me, it'll work for anyone. In Genesis chapter 3, we're introduced to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We know that Adam and Eve's disobedience brought in sin. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. And sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. Where envy and strife exist, there is confusion in every evil work. And now the knowledge of evil is introduced into our lives. Much like dominoes, it only takes one fall to start the descent into darkness and depression. Depression is a constant feeling of sadness and loss of interest, which stops your normal activities. Generally, depression does not result from a single event, but from a mixture of events and factors. Some people resort to drugs and alcohol to dull the pain. Others teeter on the brink of suicide. This sliding scale of madness is even harsher on children who have not yet developed coping skills. In order to overcome this, you're going to have to deal with the elephant in the room. But have no shame, for there is nothing that has come against you or tempted you that is not common to man. And God will not let you be tempted beyond your ability, but will, with the temptation, provide a way of escape. Here's three things to get you started. Examine yourself, change your direction, and walk by faith. King David in the Bible returned home to Ziglag only to find his city on fire. Wives and children were all gone. And David's men were also distressed, for they had lost everything, and they discussed stoning David. The psalmist had to ask himself, why are you so beat down? Why are you so depressed within? Put your trust in God. And David encouraged himself in the Lord. And he also found strength in the Lord his God. Just like David, you can recover it all. God is no respecter of persons. And weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Jesus told Peter that Satan had desired to sift him as wheat, but he had prayed for him. Sifting is a separating process. God separates us for good, but the enemy separates us for evil, like a lion that separates his prey for destruction. Peter, who cut off the ear of the soldier and would have been brought up on attempted murder charges had Jesus not healed him. The same Peter that denied Jesus three times, yet God restored him to the fold. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to bring you to an expected end. Gideon was fearful and had low self-esteem and could not imagine that the Lord would call upon him to deliver Israel from the Midianites. God called him a mighty man of valor and told him to go in the strength that he has for little as much when God is in it. Gideon was victorious because if God will bring you to it, he will bring you through it. You may feel like, well, I can't help myself. I can't change anything. A very small effort can make a world of a difference. The Bible says we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. Repent and seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all those things will be added unto you. Forgive. Close the gap between conflict and resolution. Qualify those that you allow back into your life. Only allow those that are good to you and for you. Connect yourself to family or friends who know you so well that they're willing to sound the alarm when they see signs of mood swings, behavioral changes, negative thinking, or withdrawal. Connect to a dream team of medical care professionals who have your best interests at heart. And from this day forward, whatsoever things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, of a good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things.